Hey guys, I just wanted to film a favorites video because I haven't filmed, well, really anything in a while except for the last haul um, that I did. A few things that I've been using, not only all month long, but kind of for a while. I've told you in a few videos if you've um, been watching them um, that I've kind of not really been switching it up that much. I've been keeping everything pretty simple. Um, like today, I just have on eyeshadow, and I'll talk about the eyeshadow in a second, no eyeliner whatsoever. Um, I feel like I'm not looking into the camera. Um, no eyeliner whatsoever, mascara, blush, and then either, um, well, I'll talk about foundation. So I'll kind of just start out with um, the change of seasons and things. Uh, usually my skin will not freak out a little bit. It's been pretty, like, knock on wood good for a while. Um, and I've been using the Bare Essentials powders, and I've been using two different colors because I'm kind of in between right now. I've just been using that, uh, and then I, um, I've i been using Cetaphil uh, Daily Cleanser for years now, and um, I finished a huge bottle from Costco, and I did, so I had purchased um, these Pacifica wipes, and these are the coconut water wipes from Target um, in, the, in the summertime, and I only use these when I'm traveling, um, or I'm really, really tired, and I, like, am already in bed and forgot to take off my makeup, but I usually don't like to use makeup removing cloths. I use, uh, Pond Cold Cream on my eyes, and then just, like, the Cetaphil on my face to just wash my face, um, and I use it also in the shower in the morning when I take a shower. I picked up the Pacifica, and I don't have it anymore, um, because I actually gave it to my mom. The Pacifica Coconut, I think it was Coconut Sulfate Free Algae... Um, cleanser and it smells amazing it's for all skin types it's organic or something um, I don't know because I don't have the bottle in front of me and I started using it and I started to notice dry patches like on my face um, like all around like right here and on my chin and it was kind of a place places that I never normally would get dry and I found it kind of weird because I feel like I usually you know get oily in my t-zone have pretty normal combination but also sensitive skin um, so I used it for a week and a friend of mine was like, you know, maybe your skin's just adjusting, but it was so bad. Like it was painful. Um, and it was just really bad. So I gave that to my mom and she really likes it. Also, all the reviews I've heard about that are, are pretty good. Um, so if you have dry skin, I wouldn't recommend it. I just feel like it dried me out so much. I was using like a, like dermatology sample, um, like face lotion on my face because it was so dry like I couldn't even I don't know it wasn't that noticeable but it was just it just like I felt all day like my face just hurt so um it kind of freaked out and that's why I was broke out a little bit and and things but so that being said um, that's kind of my fail and I kind of wanted to start with that because I'm just going to talk about some products that I've been using so after that happened I didn't want to put powder on my face as foundation just because uh, powder can be a little bit drying so I went back to and I actually I, I I'll do maybe I'll do like an updated I don't know if I ever had a makeup collection I think I just showed my Muji but um, I used to have my two Muji things which I still have um, there, my vanity's up there. So you could see those two guys up there. And then down here, let me see if I can see that. So down here, sorry this is random. I, I film on my computer, as all of you know, that it's shitty quality. Um, and excuse my language. Um, but those are just records down there. And then those are just some palettes and two boxes of just random samples and stuff. And then this is lipstick. This, I used to have a big Tupperware down here. I cleaned it out gave things away to friends and family um, because I, I just am sick of the clutter. I'm sick of having so much stuff that I don't use and I'd rather give it to my sisters or my mom or friends or people and I just don't need to have so much stuff all the time. Sorry I'm rambling a little bit. So this is something I still had in my collection and this is the only other foundation product I think I still have. Um, and it's the Origins Vita Zing. And I also was watching Michelle uh, 1218's video and she was talking about using this again. And I was like, oh, because um, I was thinking while my skin was really dry, I didn't really know what to do because I didn't want to put on the powder. So this is just like a similar to a BB cream. It just comes out um, white. And I've talked about this before. I bought it a few summers ago. It just comes out like that. It has kind of like some speckles in it. But it's like a BB cream and you just rub it in. Um, 
and it just kind of, you know, it doesn't provide a lot of coverage, but it just kind of adheres to your skin tone, kind of evens you out a little bit, and it has SPF 15. So I was using my daily moisturizer along with this, and now um, after a week of not using the Pacifica, my skin has kind of, it's getting back to normal. So, so yeah, I've been using this. Um, I'll probably go back to the Bare Essentials shortly, um, though, but I've been using this with my Chanel, um, my Chanel Powder Universal, which is my favorite setting powder. So I've been using those two. Okay, now I'm going to talk about actual favorites, and I'm sorry for rambling quite a bit, but I feel like I haven't done that in a while. Um, this is my absolute favorite thing ever. Um, I have a lot of, I still have all of my eyeshadow palettes. I kind of collect the Urban Decay Book of Shadows and those ones. I don't have the newest, um, Vice palette, but I love those. I haven't touched them in months, um, but they're in my, my drawer. Um, so my sister actually bought for my birthday, and since I got that, um, which she actually gave it to me a little bit after my birthday, so it was probably early September, um, she bought me the Marc Jacobs Lolita palette. It's called The Lolita, and it's number 206. Um, they have these at Sephora. They are beautiful the eyeshadows um, but this one I am in love with um, it's the packaging is just gorgeous um, as you can see there's fingerprints all over it but it's the same um, I'm sure you've seen this before but it just has like a little button on the bottom and then um, seven eyeshadows and a pretty nice size mirror so you could easily um, do this on the go if you were going to but I, I obviously don't um, <clears throat> before I talk about the shadows I also I still have this because um, I wanted to talk about this, and I don't really care about these things usually, um, but this really excited me because it's like, it's the pouch that they all come in, um, it's kind of like made out of ribbon and has like a little button right here. Why I really like this is because I never have, like, I don't have a million brushes, I don't have a brush roll, I would never need to travel with a brush roll, I need to travel with like four brushes and that's it. So this is perfect because these actually fit full-size brushes into them. So that was just a MAC regular brush. This is just a MAC um, 116 brush. And you can easily fit them all in there. Um, with that one, it's kind of tight at the top, but like you wouldn't really need to close it. So I just really like this as something to kind of protect them. Um, cause usually I just end up throwing them in like a makeup bag because I don't have anything else. But, um, I just wanted to share that in case anybody else has this and has been having the same issues that I've been having with traveling with brushes. So the shadows and I'm wearing two today and I've been wearing these sort of all month long. I'll talk about the, the three, one, the three shadows that I wear the most. Um, as you can see right here, this one I've worn every day since I've gotten this palette. This is the most beautiful, um, like all over lid, high lady shade, shimmery, just kind of um, color. It's so silky smooth, champagne kind of color right there. Um, and I just put this all over my lid. And what I've been doing is I've been putting it all over my lid to kind of just the half, um, three quarters of the way through. And then I've been using this kind of shimmery um brown color it's like a light brown taupey kind of color um and I've just been putting that on the ends not in the crease or anything I've just been kind of doing the outer um quarter of my eye with that and I've just been really liking the way that looks um the other thing that I've been doing um was just this color and then this like this almost this I think this could be skin tone for some people but it's obviously dark for me but it's just like a uh, a light brown matte color and I've been putting that in the crease and I think that looks really nice as well um, The nice thing about this palette is it's all neutrals, but it gives you three matte colors one um, One very uh, light color and then the one I just talked about and then this darker one Which is so pigmented and so pretty I've used that too um, like for a night out haven't actually experimented with is this one in the middle and I don't think it'll show up but it's very sparkly um, it's very like you just have to kind of touch it and it just like these these shadows are amazing um, but I have not really tested it to see if there's any fallout but there's kind of chunky glitter in there so um, I haven't really played with that very much um, and then there's this pinky kind of iridescent shade which is really pretty as well that I've worn all over my lid which is really nice um, so if you are looking for a neutral eye palette, um, highly recommend this one. I think it's so, 
I mean, it's just, it's really perfect. I love it so much. So, um, this is the Lolita and I will probably be using this kind of nonstop. So love that. Next two products are lipsticks and these are, one of them is, well, both of these, well, I'll take that back. One of these is discontinued. I don't know if it has been re-promoted. I got this a while ago at a CCO and it's really mangled and I forgot about it and then I found it in my drawer and it's just the MAC D squared uh, lipstick in the color Nude Rose and it's a luster and it's on my lips actually right now. I just put it on before I was filming this video and you can see it's just a nude pink color. Um, it's not something totally unique but it's a very wearable nude pink um not too light or anything like that as you can see it's kind of melted and falling apart but i'm kind of just trying to use it up but i really like this color if they did re-promote it i would pick it up again um but since it's so mangled i don't put it in my purse ever or anything i just use it in the mornings um and i've been kind of gravitating towards the nude lip again um since it's getting a little bit colder another thing this i mean i know this is really hyped up and and it's been now it'll it'll be the third time that this is being promoted but i picked this up because i was randomly in bloomingdale's um and i didn't realize they released this on the thursday that i happened to be in bloomingdale's my sister already had this like the queen of red lipsticks um and i hadn't tried it or anything but i was like oh i better get on that if i actually want to try it because it sold out so fast the first time and when it went on MAC. Um, but it's just the, the MAC Rihanna, the Riri Wu um, retro matte color. It comes in a bullet like this. They're re-promoting it again for the holidays. So if you didn't get your hands on it the first time, I think that it should be fairly simple because everybody should have it by now. Um, but I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm sure you heard so much about it. It just has like Rihanna's signature in it. Um, it's I don't wear a lip liner with this. It lasts literally all day long. Um, and it doesn't really transfer onto like glasses or this doesn't transfer. It's a bit drying just because it is a matte red, but it's pretty easy to apply. Um, and once it's there, it's going to stay there all day. And, um, I love it. So it's very wearable. Um, I really highly recommend it, especially if you've never tried reds before, please try them because you'll be surprised how much you'll actually like them. Um, cause I was kind of one of those people, but I absolutely love this. More product that's a favorite and then two like honorable mentions and then I'm going to talk about some music and then a random food item. So, um, yeah. So this is an item that I'm sorry you can't get anymore, but it is the Chanel Soho de Chanel, um, highlighting powder and blush. This came out, I want to say like two or three years ago and it just looks like this. It's just, I'm showing you this because it's my only like fall blush and it's just really pretty because it has pink it has like a highlight in it and it also has like this kind of rosy mauvey kind of color and it just makes a really nice fall cheek I wore it today um I love it uh like I said I'm sorry you can't go out and buy it but I think that there are colors that would be similar to this so I've been wearing this all month long honorable mentions and this these are kind of like I got them later in the month um but the first one I'm 28 years old and I've never had a problem with like I don't wear concealer at all anywhere um, I never had a problem with under eye um, darkness or circles or anything like that but I've been noticing like bags under my eyes lately and I don't know if it's because I'm really tired or if it's because I'm getting old but I don't know. So I just, I picked this up and I actually really like it. Um, it's the Estee Lauder Idealist Cooling Eye Illuminator and it comes in a tube like this. It's a bit pricey, um, but I was looking at different creams and things like that. And this one kind of um, appealed to me for what I needed it for. Uh, I was kind of looking at some things and it was more for um, like wrinkles, which I should probably start using a cream like that too. Um, but this one is more of a, like a deep puffer because like my eyes would get really puffy and if I do ever cry and I go to sleep like after doing that, um, I'll wake up and my eyes will be completely swollen. Um, I think I just have sensitive skin. So this has like a, a, some kind of cooling tip. So like when you put this on and you squeeze the product out, um, this is just cold. It's always cold and I don't know how they do that, but it is. Massage the cooling ceramic applicator around the eyes um, AM and PM, but it is tint out. Like it comes, the color I got is light medium, but they also have a dark color as well. It just kind of blends in. Um, but it's really nice and cooling and I feel like it has helped, 
um, with the the puffiness of my eyes. If you have any recommendations for something else, I would love to hear that. So um, if there's something you love, please let me know. Um, that I wanted to talk about is this thing. And I picked this up because I saw on Sephora the, and I'm going to get this wrong, but it's, what is it? The brand is like Bashik, Bashik, Bashika. I've never tried anything by them and I'm not even like looking at how you even spell their name. So I'm probably butchering it, but you know, that skincare company they sell at Sephora. Um, well, they started making this Konjac and again, I don't know if I'm saying that right sponge and it looks just like this but theirs was $18 and I found this and I was just kind of intrigued by it when I was reading about it and I'll tell you about it in a second um but the reviews on Sephora were great they were like we I love this product and a few people said I love this product but I've been using it for years um it's from you know Asian beauty and you can get it somewhere else for five dollars so I was like I'll just try the cheap one first um and see if I like that so so what it is, is the 100% natural um, sponge made from vegetable fiber, and I bought mine on Amazon for like $5.95, and they had a few different ones. They had um, ones for different skin types. This is just like the original one. They had ones like you can use on your body as well. Um, and so <clears throat> it's made from the Konjac dietary fiber, which I think is um, grown in Asia. Take this out of the packaging, and right now mine is... Um, pretty soft because it was sitting in my shower which it shouldn't have been but um it's it's like hard as a rock and when I took it out of the packaging I was like is this how this is supposed to feel um hard as a rock and so you know what this does is like it's a, a pretty dense fiber and then it soaks up all the water you squeeze the water out um and then you just kind of massage it into your face you can use it with a cleanser you can use it by itself um I've used it twice so far and that's why I'm not saying it's a favorite yet because I'm going to keep using it um but I will tell you my skin is so soft and it didn't irritate my skin and it also exfoliates your skin which I was telling you I had the dry skin problem but I didn't want to use any sort of skin exfoliator because I thought that would ex uh irritate my skin more <clears throat> so what this says is the features of this is it gently exfoliates and brings back the natural glow of the skin, kills acne causing bacteria, effectively balances the pH of skin, um, it says it's ideal for delicate and sensitive skin, naturally moisturizes the skin, ideal for our people with uh, atopic skin disorders like hypersensitive skin, um, and it says you can use it on babies. So they replace it every like two to three months, I'd probably go one month and it has this little um, string because you're supposed to hang it to let it dry and it com it becomes completely hard again after you do do that. Um, so I like this a lot. Uh, I will continue to keep you updated about that. This is, this is it's 11 o'clock on a Friday night and I'm sitting home and that's why I'm doing this but I guess I'm a little tired and that's why I'm being a little bit rambly. Um, <clears throat> If you used to watch my videos when I made them regularly, you may have known that I had a gluten issue. Um, it was an issue that I kind of took seriously for a little while, and then I was kind of, you know, some test results came back then negative, and I got frustrated and I went off of it. And then I went back to the doctor, had some more tests done, and they're like, you really need to stop eating gluten. So I did, and I've been gluten free since April and it's actually a lot easier than you think. Um, I know it's kind of a fad thing these days and it's sort of all over the place and in your face. Um, but these pretzels are something that I had the first time around and then obviously again, but I will tell you that these pretzels are better than any other pretzel I have ever eaten and I've given them to friends and I said, please try these. Um, they are amazing and they're extra crunchy and honestly, if I can, I mean, I, I can't eat regular pretzels, but if I didn't have a gluten problem, I would choose to get these. And I've had people tell me the same. Um, so Snyder's makes these and you can probably find them. I know Whole Foods carries them. Um, my local grocery store carries them. They're dairy free, casein free and egg free. Um, I have a friend that's allergic to eggs. So, you know, this kind of is like a, it's kind of the best product ever. So these like, they come in pretzel sticks and they come in mini pretzel shapes. Um, so I love those and I wanted to share those, especially if you have like a gluten um, issue and you haven't tried those yet. Okay, so that's it for like makeup and 
stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about music for a little bit. There's been a few things that um, I've been loving lately. Um, the first, and this is nothing new because this just came out, um, but it is Arcade Fire's new album, Reflector. Amazing. It's streaming right now on, on YouTube, and then it comes out on Tuesday. Um, I pre-ordered the vinyl, and it comes to me sometime next week. But um, because I did that, I got a pre-sale code, and I actually got to see them in Brooklyn. Um last weekend and it was such an amazing show if you haven't seen them live do it this tour um I hadn't seen them live before and I was just kind of like you know I love Arcade Fire but I'm not gonna go see them at Madison Square Garden I retract that I think I would definitely go see them at Madison Square Garden even though I do not love that venue um they put on an amazing show and that album is is honestly the best since Funeral so this is kind of a flashback album, but um, it's kind of two-parted. This is Death Cab for Cuties, Transatlanticism. Um, this album for me, I probably listened to when it came out. Like, I feel like I think that's right when iTunes came out too. And it was um, my freshman year of college. And I think, like, I remember having iTunes and it was like the most played, which was like at the time it was like a hundred times, like every song from this album was played like a hundred times. I don't know how long, but it was my most listened to album of 2003. Um, so 10 years ago, it's their 10th anniversary of this album. And it's just a very beautiful album. If you haven't listened to this album ever, please give it a listen because it's, it's truly beautiful. Um, and I'm not really a fan of Death Cab's newer things. Um, but this album will always hold a place in my heart. And the reason I'm mentioning it now is because they're re-releasing it on vinyl. And this I have on vinyl from, I don't know, I feel like it's a European import. But I don't know. But they're re-releasing this on vinyl. But they also released um, the demo versions of this, which I have downloaded and have listened to. And it brings me back to this album but it's also something entirely different and it just kind of you know makes you look at those songs again and realize how much you love them and how beautiful they were but also appreciate them in a totally different way um so i've been listening to that a lot lately too uh so absolutely love this and again like if you have never heard this album please 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 give it a listen because it's it's a it's a beautiful one um and it'll forever be one of my favorites so I'm also have been obsessed with Lord's album, Pure Heroin. Um, I absolutely, completely fell in love with that album. I heard Royals, um, I think from a friend, yeah, from a friend, and she was like, oh, there's this song, it's really great, and I was like, where did you find this? She was like, oh, they played on the radio, and I was like, oh, really? And I don't really listen to the radio much, um, <clears throat> but when her album came out, I downloaded it immediately, and I still listen to it, like, literally every day. This is not the album. This is her EP, but I have a friend that works in the music business, and she sent me um, a copy of that. If you like Royals, um, it's not my favorite song on the album, um, but her, she's 16 years old. I'm sure you already know that, but she's amazing. It's kind of a cross, like, I feel like people that like Top 40 will like her, and then people who like indie music will like her as well um my favorite song on the album is ribs i'll put links below um to my that's everything i hope you guys enjoyed this video and it wasn't too rambly uh thanks for watching and i'll see you guys soon bye